Hello and welcome. You're watching Good Morning India. I'm Gargi Rawat. Thanks so much for tuning in this Monday morning. We have lots lined up ahead for you. That's right, Gargi. A lot happening this Monday morning. Good morning. This is Priyanshi. Himachal steps up security after Khalistan call. Two new Supreme Court judges to be sworn in today. And Cyclone Asani alert in three states. We'll get you all the details. First, a look at the headlines. Following vandalism at Himachal Pradesh Legislative Assembly building, the state has now stepped up security. Interstate borders have been sealed and security on high alert. Several opposition parties jointly reject delimitation panel report. Call for emergency meeting in Jammu today. After a string of losses, the Congress in brainstorming mode this week. Top Congress panel meets today ahead of the, this week's Udaipur Chintan Shiver. Guwahati High Court Chief Justice Sudhanshu Dhulia and Gujarat High Court Judge Jamshed B. Pardiola will be appointed as Supreme Court judges today. In Ukraine, Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau says the Russian leader Vladimir Putin was responsible for war crimes. He visits a war scarred Irpin. And Cyclone Asani intensifies into severe storm alert in three states, rainfall likely in coastal Odisha district. Well, let's get started with news from Himachal and Himachal Pradesh Chief Minister Jairam Thakur has ordered an investigation after flags of Khalistan were found draped over the gates and boundary wall of the Himachal Pradesh Legislative Assembly in Dharamshala. Himachal Pradesh has stepped up security after the Khalistan referendum call. Interstate borders have been sealed and police barricades placed there. Let's go across now to Ghazali for more. Ghazali, give us the latest. Hotels are also being watched now. See, uh, this Sikh for Justice, Sikhs for Justice, a banned outfit, keeps giving this call every other week. But uh, um, whatever we have seen, that whenever this outfit gives a call, the security agencies are always on alert. And this is exactly what happened in Patiala last month, when we saw that clash between the two groups. That was also sort of a result of what was announced by Sikhs for Justice, that they will mark... Uh, Khalistan Day on uh, 29th or 30th of April and then that incident unfolded there and exactly this is what happened yesterday because Sikhs for Justice outfit has been giving this call for celebrating or marking Khalistan Day or referendum day in Himachal Pradesh and he has been issuing the outfit has been issuing threats to Himachal Pradesh CM Mr. Jairam Thakur. So yesterday when this incident happened that uh, Khalistan banners and these flags were found on the outer boundary wall of the Vidhan Sabha in Dharamshala, uh, the security has has been stepped up. The police hinted initially that it may be the work of some tourists from Punjab, though the chief minister uh, didn't say anything like that. He said, I won't comment upon it, but investigation is on. So Himachal Pradesh has, uh, police has constituted an SIT to look into the case. They are also trying to uh, uh, coordinate with the central intelligence agencies and the state inter intelligence agencies to see who is behind this entire episode. And that is why security has also been stepped up in the state. An alert was issued yesterday by by the intel department of the state that will have that the police had to look out for uh, all these hotels sarais guest house and rest houses because as police feels that this entire uh, thing would have been a handiwork of outsiders or tourists that is why police is trying to uh, step up the security uh, interstate nakas have been posted on the interstate borders of himachal pradesh at various locations and police uh, chauki or you can say the vigil has been asked to be very strict on the border areas of the state. In other news now, the Congress Working Committee will meet ahead of the brainstorming session in, in Odaipur to give an in-principle approval to the various panel reports on organizational reform, social justice and empowerment, agriculture and farmers, among other issues. And some of the panels have focused extensively on a base paper to help the party address core issues it has been facing after a series of electoral defeats since losing power in 2014. 
Well, let's go across to Sunil Prabhu now for more. And Sunil, give us some more details of what, what is expected today ahead of the Chintan Shiver. And also, uh, one wonders how honestly, you know, this whole exercise is going to be, these reports and how, uh, and the main issue that the Congress is facing is encountering the BJP, which it hasn't been able to. That's right, uh, Gargi. And uh, I, as you rightly pointed, how honest is, uh, is a good question. Uh, honestly, for the Congress Working Committee and for the Congress Party, it's a make-or-break uh, situation. Uh, if they don't succeed uh, this time round, uh, they really uh, there's no silver lining uh, ahead of 2024. Uh, so it's in that backdrop, uh, I think, that with great sincerity, uh, the various uh, six uh, uh, panels uh, have prepared base papers, which will be uh, formally adopted by the Indian National Congress uh, to take forward and have a brainstorming and see what can be taken forward in terms of agenda, in terms of rep better representation, uh, to ensure uh, that they counter the BJP's Hindutva plank, uh, because election after election and we're seeing this uh, in every state uh, there is a clear pattern uh, and the congress is unable uh, to counter the bjp's narrative of uh, hindutva uh, and uh, how do they do this is something that uh, will definitely be part of that entire exercise uh, the rest of course is of, of the organizational issues uh, of how uh, you know you can give uh, empower the uh, booth level the uh, the district level uh, the PCC level, not necessarily a top-down approach, uh, more broad base at the center uh, to ensure that it's just not left uh, to uh, Sonia Gandhi or Rahul Gandhi or Priyanka Gandhi, uh, but uh, an entire policy body making uh, exercise, uh, something that the dissenters had been pointing out. So it's in that backdrop we'll have to wait and see uh, what will be addressed and how they can give a vision uh, for 2024 uh, to counter that narrative of not only the BJP, uh, but other opposition parties uh, like the Aam Admi Party uh, and other regional parties who are attempting uh, to take away uh, that uh, limelight from the Congress Party as an opposition party. Thanks, Sunil, for joining us with those details. And another news, the Supreme Court will get two new judges today with CGI N.V. Ramana administering the oath of office to Chief Justice of Guwahati High Court, Justice Sudhan Shudhulia and Gujarat High Court Judge Justice Jamshed B. Pardiwala. Justice Pardiwala will be in line to become the CGI in May 2028 for a span of over two years. With the appointments of the two judges, the top court will regain its full strength of 34 judges. That's right. And let's now go across to Sukirti for more. Sukirti, so tell us what's going to take place today. And also, as Priyanshi said, the Supreme Court will regain its full strength. All right, we'll try and go across to Sukirti again. Sukirti, if you're there on the line, uh, tell us more about the program today. And, as, and you know, this will mean that the Supreme Court will be back at full strength. And tell us more about the judges. Uh, well, yes, uh, both of these uh, judges, they will be uh, taking their oath today at about 10.30 a.m. The Chief Justice of India, N.V. Ravana, will be administering this oath. Uh, this will bring back uh, the strength of the judges in the Supreme Court back to 34, which is the full strength. Uh, Justice uh, Jamshed B. Pardiwala is uh, for formerly the uh, Gujarat High Court judge. Uh, he will be the fourth judge from the Parsi community to be part of the Supreme Court bench. Uh, several uh, generations of his family have been in the legal fraternity. Uh, he's been practicing law as a High Court of Gujarat since 1990. On the other hand, Justice Sudhanshu Dhulia uh, will be the second judge to be elevated from Uttarakhand. And uh, interestingly, he's the sibling of national award-winning film director and actor Tugmanshu Dhulia. Uh, again, uh, Justice Dhulia has also been uh, practicing at the bar since about 1986. Uh, and both of these uh, judges have a very illustrious uh, legal career, but now moving to the Supreme Court. Uh, also, you know, these uh, swearing in ceremonies and new judges joining in is significant considering the high number of judges that have been joining the Supreme Court in the last one year alone. Last year, we had seen nine judges take oath and uh, being sworn in at the same time, out of which uh, um, uh, there were women judges as well, including Justice V.V. Nagaratna, right. who will end up being the first uh, woman CGI uh, later. So uh, the Chief Justice of India, N.V. Ramana, at this point of time, trying to ensure that all vacancies when it comes to 
uh, the Supreme Court as well as High Courts are filled on time and also the government has given its approval this time to the SP Collegium's recommendation uh, within a span of about 48 hours. They had approved the names of these two judges. All right, that's uh, pretty quick in the scheme of things. Thank you so much, Sukirti, for joining us uh, with those details. Welcome back. Well, let's now focus on Cyclone Asani that's formed over the southeast Bay of Bengal and it's intensified into a severe cyclonic storm that's likely to bring heavy rain to parts of Andhra Pradesh, Odisha, West Bengal in coming days. And in fact, in Bengal, Chief Minister Mamta Banerjee has rescheduled a visit to these districts, a visit that was supposed to happen this week uh, because of the cyclone. A tweet by the Defence PRO said the Coast Guard aircrafts and ships were being used to broadcast warnings to fishermen and that disaster response teams were on standby. Let's go across to Alok now for more. Alok, what is the latest that you're hearing? Uh, well, so uh, two or three things that have already been mentioned by you and Priyanshi. Uh, essentially, I think uh, the, uh, the interest or the concern or the worry for us uh, who are in Kolkata or in the nearby districts would be how much damage uh, potential the cyclone has. Uh, see, if it is just going to be rainfall and it's not going to be any major damage, then I think everyone will keep their fingers crossed and hope that this is not an Amphan of 2020 or even a Yast of 2021 because these cyclones also came in around the same time. Uh, but like you said, uh, Mamta Banerjee, the Chief Minister, has deferred a visit that she was planning uh, to two districts. Uh, and now she says that she's going to go uh, next week, which is after May 17th. Uh, that's because uh, she wants to monitor the cyclone. Uh, this is, uh, as of now, expected to trigger heavy rainfall and winds between May 10 to 13 uh, in Bengal and, of course, in Odisha and nearby Andhra Pradesh. Uh, but, uh, uh, again, at the moment, you never know because these cyclones do sometimes, you know, whether they can take a turn for the worse or not is something that everyone will be worried about. Uh, the districts that are expected to receive heavy rainfall are north and south 24 Parjanas and east Midnapur or Purva Medhnipur. Uh, which is all uh, near to Calcutta, though Kolkata itself uh, may not be very badly affected as of now. But again, you know, there are too many mays and ifs and buts right now uh, because uh, uh, there is constant monitoring happening and, you know, warnings and advisories are being given out in real time. Uh, so the PRO defence here in Kolkata has tweeted, and I'm sure we may have those images uh, on air also, of uh, their choppers, etc., giving out warnings over the sea to fishermen and uh, also to any other mariners who may be in the area. So they are saying, and the uh, local uh, IMD or the weather department here has said that there should be a suspension of tourism activities between the 10th to 12th of May and also fishing activities. So as of now, those are the advisories. Uh, but one waits to see and like I said, one keeps uh, fingers crossed hoping that there won't be any major damage uh, from this cyclone and that uh, while it may trigger rains and winds, of course, but uh, it won't go beyond that. But uh, right now, like I said, everyone's monitoring what's happening. Right. Thanks, Alok, for joining us with those details. Uh, on this story, we're also now joined by our guest, Mahesh Palavat, who is the VP of Meteorology and Climate Change at SkyMet Weather. Mr. Palavat, tell us more about the movement of the cyclone and when and where will it make landfall, if at all? Uh, see, as of now, the cyclone is moving with a speed of, say, uh, 18 to 20 km per hour. That is the speed of movement of the eye of cyclone. And the wind speed is around 100 to 120 km per hour, around the core of the eye. And it is moving in a northwesterly direction towards south Odisha and Andhra Pradesh coast. And uh, while reaching uh, near the coast, say, it will maintain a distance of 200 to 250 km. And thereafter, it will recover. Uh, by night of uh, 10th of May, it will recover in northeasterly direction. As of now, the cyclone uh, today, it is as a, uh, here as a, a severe cyclone. And it will move in northwesterly direction. And uh, from this uh, point, uh, like uh, from uh, southern parts of Odisha and northern parts of uh, coastal Andhra Pradesh, it will recurve in northeasterly direction and it will maintain a distance uh, from Orissa coast of uh, around 200 to 250 kilometers and it will start degenerating because as of now, sea surface temperatures are uh, conducive uh, 30 to 31 kilometer per hour and moderate vertical wind shear that is 20 to 25 knots. As it will move in northerly parts, or you can say over northwest of Bengal, sea surface temperature will start diminishing, or you can say uh, reducing, 
and vertical wind shear will also start increasing, leading to degeneration de de of this weather system. So uh, it will move uh, as a de deep depression over Gangetic, uh, near the Gangetic West Bengal, or you can say southwest Bay of Bengal. So uh, threat is only uh, over north coastal Andhra Pradesh, coastal Orissa, and uh, the Gangetic West Bengal area. And that too, the wind speed will be around 60 to 70 km per hour at the most, and uh, rainfall will be moderate. Uh, with isolated heavy spells. We do not expect heavy to extremely heavy rainfall in the order of say 150 to 200 mm. Uh, rainfall will be in the range of say 60 to 70, somewhere it will be, it may uh, be uh, 90 to 100 millimeter and wind speed will be uh, 70 to 75 kilometer per hour. So potential of damage which we have seen in the case of Yas and Amphan, uh, uh, it is uh, very less, but it's still we should right. not lower our guard. Yeah. All right, so that is a relief. So it won't be as damaging as those cyclones of the past. But uh, worrying is this trend of, you know, cyclones emerging more frequently uh, from the Bay of Bengal. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Palawat, for joining us on the program this morning. And with this, it's now time for a short break. And coming up, a double murder in Chennai. A couple who returned from the United States murdered by their domestic helper. All the details coming up. Welcome back. A double murder in Chennai, a couple who returned from the United States just on Saturday, has been murdered by a domestic helper who stayed with them. Police have recovered five crore worth of jewellery, including nine kilograms of gold looted from the couple. The police have also arrested two people in the case and the couple was identified as 60-year-old Srikant and his 55-year-old wife Anuradha. Srikant was a chartered accountant by profession. Very, very tragic. And just having returned on Saturday, the accused allegedly killed the couple in a gruesome way in their house and then buried the bodies in their farmhouse outside Chennai. Uh, police arrested them from Andhra Pradesh as they attempted to escape to their hometown in Nepal. Uh, police exhumed the bodies for a post-mortem and forensic examination. So very, very gruesome murder there in Chennai. And now a very disturbing a story of how an airline treated a special needs child. Indigo Airlines faced the heat from passengers for not allowing a child with disability to board a flight with his family at the Rachi airport on Saturday. And Gargi, in a shocking report, the airline in a statement said that the child posed a threat to other passengers' safety. It said in view of the safety of passengers, a specially abled child could not board the flight with his family on the 7th of May as he was in a state of panic. The ground staff wait for, waited for him to calm down till the last minute, but to no avail. This was as per Indigo's statement. All right, let's just listen in a bit to that video and then we'll... Uh read out the statement by the person who posted the video. rallying around the family but uh, uncomfortable scenes and obviously scenes that would have agitated the child more now Manisha Gupta a fellow passenger and who witnessed this witnessed it wrote about it in an elaborate post online the indigo manager said Ms Gupta kept shouting and telling everyone that the child is uncontrollable uh, the only person who's in panic is you is what Ms Gupta uh, quoted a fellow passenger's retort there were even a group of doctors apparently traveling on the same flight who even offered to provide full support to the child and his parents if any health episode were to occur mid-air, she writes in the post. Now, the aviation regulator, Director General of Civil Aviation, has sought a report from Indigo in the matter and uh, you'll be, uh, you know, want to know the f that the airline did put up the family in a hotel and got them on to another flight, but a very, very unnecessary scene there. 
And moving on, Union Home Ministry has granted security clearance to Jet Airways that is planning to relaunch commercial flight operations in the next few months, according to an official document. The Jalan Calrock Consortium is currently the promoters of Jet Airways. The airline in its old avatar was owned by Naresh Goyal and had operated its last flight on the 17th of April 2019. Uh, last Thursday, the airline conducted its test flight to and from the Hyderabad airport in a step towards obtaining the airport operator certificate. All right, and in, in some other news now, it is the last day of the LIC IPO, which is oversubscribed. So, Priyanshi, take us through all the details. That's right, Gargi. It's the last day of India's biggest IPO, and it has been oversubscribed, as you said, and uh, by 1.7 times. In fact, policyholders and employees have been the most enthusiastic about the issue. The policyholder portion has been subscribed five times. Employee portion has been subscribed 3.8 times and retail investor portion has been subscribed 1.6 times. Along with this, non-institutional investor portion has been subscribed 1.2 times. And uh, the only portion that has not been fully subscribed yet is the qualified investor book. And only 67% of the qualified investor portion has been subscribed as of yet. So we can see um, uh, the center uh, aims to bring uh, 21,000 crores through this mega LIC IPO and we can see that it's been oversubscribed with uh, oversubscriptions across categories except for one. So that's and today is the last day for subscriptions for this mega IPO. Now, COVID waves expose devastation in our hospitals, our morgues and crematoriums. Our visuals were embossed on our newspapers and flashed across our TV screens on the news. But what of the unseen devastation? That's right, the thousands of homes that lost family members, earning members to the virus. How are they surviving one year on as the rest of India returns to normalcy? They've been forgotten, reduced to mere statistics and some even running pillow to post for that promised COVID relief. Here's a report. All support system gone. Tears don't stop. The ration box is empty. The child is malnourished and keeps crying in pain. COVID took away every support of 33-year-old Afsana of Mumbai. Settled in Dharavi, her male family members sold clothes and fruits. Afsana lost her husband seven years ago due to a blood disease. Afsana's two brothers-in-law and father-in-law were the only support. The two brothers-in-law died in the first wave of the pandemic. Then the second wave took away her father-in-law as well, her last support. Afsana had lost her mother during her childhood and the father lost the battle of life due to lack of oxygen in the COVID second wave. Now Afsana and her two children are dependent on help from relatives and neighbours. Eighth pass Afsana earns a few hundred rupees a month through sewing and some household work. She can't afford to send her children, 13 and 7 years old, when even paying house rent is difficult. Some good souls like Dr. Akhtar Sheikh lend a helping hand to the family. But 
इट इज नॉट इनफ लेने वाले बहुत लोग आते हैं मगर जो जरूरत में होता है उस तक चीज़ें पहुंचती नहीं है और यही लॉकडाउन में भी हुआ है बहुत लोगों तक नहीं पहुंची हम लोगों ने जबरदस्ती छीन छीन के झपड़ झपड़ के लाके इनको दिया है ताकि इनका घर चल सके इनके बच्चों के पेट में अन्न जा सके खाना जा सके बच्चे थोड़ा सा मतलब आप देख सकते हैं ये बच्चे कितने कमज़ोर हैं अगर ये बच्चों को अच्छे से खाना मिलता है या वो अच्छे खुश होते तो शायद और तंदुरुस्त होते मैं इसी एक ही बात कहूँगा कि बी जो है इनको एज अ डिपेंडेंट कंसिडर करें और इनके पास जो भी अमाउंट होता है इनके अकाउंट में जो है जमा करवाए ताकि इनकी थोड़ी सी मदद हो सके मैं जानता हूँ फिफ्टी थाउजेंड कोई बहुत बड़ी अमाउंट नहीं है ना ही उससे उनकी जिंदगी चल सकती है मगर क्या है थोड़ा सा ये स्टेबल हो जाएंगे थोड़ा सा ये अपने जरूरतों को जो है पूरा कर सकेंगे या अपने कुछ चीजों को स्टेबल कर सकेंगे अफसाना हु लिव्स इन दिस 14 बाय 10 फीट रूम हैज आल्सो अपील टू बीएमसी फॉर रिलीफ अमाउंट ऑफ 50000 शी इज वेटिंग फॉर अप्रूवल विद पूजा भारद्वाज इन मुंबई उसामा शाह फॉर एनडीटीवी All right with that time for us to slip into a short break on the other side we'll get you IPL news and it was a good day for Dhoni's team that's right and a good night for all Dhoni fans like you Gargi but uh, my home team Delhi Capital lost and we'll get you all the highlights from last night's match on turning point on the other side Chief Minister Jairam Thakur has ordered an investigation after flags of Khalistan were found draped over the gate and boundary wall of the Himachal Pradesh Legislative Assembly in Dharamshala. Uh, Himachal Pradesh has also stepped up security after a Khalistan referendum a call by a particular group. Interstate borders have been sealed and police barricades also placed there. Let's go across to NDTV's Mohammad Ghazali now for more and uh, so Ghazali uh, security they stepped up vigilance stepped up in Himachal Pradesh tell us more about this entire controversy and it's a uh, one group that has called for this referendum see this is this band seek out for it called seek so chief gopal singh pannu keeps issuing such statements week after week uh, be it for punjab be it for haryana or be it for himachal that on certain day or certain dates he will mark or celebrate the khalistan day thing will be done so he has done so in the past for punjab as well and uh, we saw what happened last month in in patiara district punjab when two outfits as were there police had to fire told them and that in particular incident was uh, uh, he his statements were responsible for that because even for patala he had said that we will mark khalistan day or some referendum voting will be done on that and groups were supporting uh, one opposing his call and the other Something is called where like uh, they clash there. Similarly, in him, Uttar Pradesh as well, he has been issuing such uh, announcements or threats to the Himachal government or Uttar Pradesh government. Or at times, he will hoist or uh, uh, people close close will hoist the Khalistan flag or put banners in the state. And that is why what happened yesterday had sent the alarm bells ringing for the security agencies uh, in Himachal Pradesh because uh, the Vidhan Sabha building on the outer Babi wall. Of on the building we saw banners and posters of sikh for uh, khalistan were posted there so this wide high alert has by state police in himachal pradesh the chief minister has already ordered an investigation and fir has been registered against mr pannu and his associates under various sections of the law but this is not the first many such fir have already been filed against him in parts of the country or in recorded telephone calls issuing threats or for hoisting khalistan flags in different parts of the country but this one is a recent one all right uh, ghazali they are giving us the latest on himachal pradesh and let's just take a look at this report on this entire controversy and how khalistan flags appeared on the assembly these khalistan flags draped over the gates and boundary wall of the Himachal Pradesh Legislative Assembly in Dharamshala on Sunday morning have now set alarm bells ringing about the level of security arrangements in the state which is set to see polls later this year and led to opposition targeting the government pro khalistan graffiti was also painted on the walls the state police has said that they suspect the involvement of tourists from punjab आ, किसी शांति तत्व को तत्वों ने ये जो है तो हम इसमें कार्रवाई कर रहे हैं 
जांच कर रहे हैं और जो भी कानूनी कार्रवाई है अमल में लाई जाएगी ये मामला देखो अभी तो मामला अगर पता होता तब तो फिर कौन लोग हैं फिर तो कोई इशू नहीं था अभी ये जांच का विषय है जो भी लोग होंगे उनको हम छिपाकों के पीछे The Himachal Pradesh CM has said that he condemns the cowardly incident and such things will not be tolerated. He also challenged the culprits to try such an act in the light of day. घटना के खिलाफ हमने जांच के आदेश दे दिए हैं, एफआईआर दर्ज कर ली गई है। ताज़ा जा रहा है कि रात में इस घटना को अंजाम दिया कुछ लोगों ने। जितने भी सीसीटीवी वहाँ पर हैं, उसमें हम कोशिश कर रहे हैं कि भी उसमें कहीं न कहीं उनकी मूवमेंट हमको मिल पाए। हमारे सिक्योरिटी का जो सारा सिस्टम रहता है, बॉर्डर का, अपने पर्� According to sources, an intelligence alert was already issued on 26 April and had warned of such an incident. Chief of Pro-Khalistan Organization, Six for Justice or SFJ, Guru Patwan Singh Pannu had issued a letter to the Himachal Pradesh Chief Minister stating that a flag of separatist militant Jarnail Singh Bhindrawale and Khalistan would be hoisted in Shimla. Himachal Pradesh had banned vehicles carrying Bhindrawale and Khalistani flags which agitated the SFJ. The organization had announced that it would hoist the Khalistani flag on 29th March, but could not do so due to heavy security. BJP faced sharp criticism on the incident from the Ahmadmi Party, which is gearing up to contest on all seats in the Himachal Pradesh polls later this year and has been hitting out at the BJP for protecting Delhi BJP leader Tejinder Bagga from arrest. Delhi Deputy Chief Minister Manish Sisodia tweeted saying, The entire BJP is trying to save one goon and Khalistanis left after putting up flags there. The government which cannot save the Legislative Assembly, how will it save the people? This is a matter of Himachal's respect and security of the country. The BJP government has completely failed. The Chief Minister of Himachal should resign immediately or the central government should immediately sack the Jairam Thakur government. The Khalistan issue has been at the center of controversy in Himachal Pradesh. Recently, BJP had accused AAP's Himachal Pradesh social media in charge of being pro-Khalistan. Soon after, AAP expelled him from all the posts in the party. With Mohammad Ghazali in Himachal Pradesh and camera person Ashok Mahale in New Delhi, this is Sukirti Divedi for NDTV. Welcome back. Cyclone Asani that formed over the southeast Bay of Bengal has intensified into a severe cyclonic storm which is likely to bring rain uh, to parts of Andhra Pradesh, Odisha, West Bengal in uh, coming days according to the Met Department. In fact, Chief Minister Mamta Banerjee rescheduled a visit to the districts uh, that was to happen this week because of the cyclone. Let's go across to Alok for more on this story. Alok, it's raining now in Kolkata, is it? Uh, give us the very latest you're hearing. Uh, well, it indeed is raining. In fact, I'll just step aside for a moment and ask Shankarda to give you a few shots here as I talk about what's happening. So, I think the worry uh, in uh, Kolkata or Bengal or in the other states that are likely to be affected by the cyclone will be about the damage potential. See, if it's only going to rain and if there's only going to be very strong winds, then I guess, you know, people will keep their uh, fingers crossed that uh, at the end of the day they're going to have a... Uh, have a escape from the ferocity of uh, such a cyclone. Uh, so that will be important and it will be a relief. But at the same time, uh, the authorities are not taking any chances. For instance, Mamta Banerjee, uh, the West Bengal Chief Minister, has put off a tour uh, that she had planned to districts uh, this afternoon, uh, uh, today, for two or three days, uh, saying that what uh, she will do is that she will stay on in Calcutta or Kolkata and uh, monitor the situation. She has uh, now said that she will make that tour or she will take that tour next week. Uh, the local uh, Met Department has issued uh, warnings and said that all tourism and fishing activities should be uh, put off, at least uh, starting uh, tomorrow to the 12th. So that's one warning that has come in. Uh, beyond that, uh, you know, we've seen tweets by the Coast Guard, by the Defence PRO saying that their choppers and ships are venturing out into the sea and issuing warnings to fishermen and to any other mariners who may be there asking them to, you know, basically stop their activities right now and to be on alert. Uh, so that is what it is right now. I think uh, how intense it will be. I was listening to uh, the earlier guest in the 8 a.m. broadcast and it was very interesting that he said that, you know, it is going to come in and then recurve, but it may not be as uh, vicious as we had uh, uh, the situation with Amphan in 2020 and also with Yas in 2021. But, you know, you never know. 
and uh, the issue is that you know these cyclones are coming up with increased frequency in a, in a month like may and one wonders you know and prays that at the last moment you know it will not become more ferocious or more intense so at the moment yes like i said it's certainly raining it's been raining for about 20 30 minutes now a uh, heavy rain and uh, it stopped a while ago and then it started again so yes uh, i think the more people uh, will look at the situation the more they will get worried but at the moment uh, the weather department and everyone else one else saying that if this is the only effect that's going to be there or likely going to be there then i guess we can also breathe a sigh of relief but i think the next 12 to 13 hours are very crucial for us to judge uh, what course uh, this uh, cyclone asani will take All right Alok thanks so much for joining us with that so it's raining there in Kolkata let's go across to uh, GP Sharma president meteorology and climate change skymet weather thank you so much for joining us and uh, so it seems uh, the path the cyclone is taking it's not going to make landfall and perhaps just cause uh, some rain in these areas is that the you know best case scenario we can hope for Yes Fagi uh, cyclone to severe at the moment yes it's inching closer to the coast still about 500 km or more away from the coast coast line and uh, it's moving not very fast but this over next two days next 48 hours it will keep its journey closer to the coast moving northwest and then uh, uh, coming the uh, somewhere uh, uh, close to the coast that zone closest it will be on between 11th and 12th that is a uh, the northern parts of coastal andhra pradesh kalingapatnam and uh, that region okay north of shakapatnam that's a where it is from possibly we should not be lowering the guard as the uh, lok was saying till the danger passes off as of now yes the storm is uh, recurving it should be on between 12th and 13th before that slow movement inching towards the coast i feel yes it may come a little dangerously close to the coast to cause some inclement weather conditions over parts of andhra pradesh places like west vizag onward kalingapatnam and then even uh, parts of odisha coastal odisha ganjam gajapati pal uh, uh, gopalpur that pocket it will give squally winds gusty winds uh, heavy rain thunder showers also so that area is to be watched for it will not be making possibly a direct hit as such unlike uh, the two predecessors in 2020 amphan and 2021 yas but then uh, god should be on and then uh, till 12th or so we have to watch it very carefully and then there after obviously it is weakening it is weakening while over the sea and the reason as you know the temperatures are dropping over the ocean uh, to about by about 2 degrees or so and that weakens and the storm the it's being steered by the upper winds little away from the coast there after it's heading more for i feel bangladesh and uh, uh, myanmar rain in kolkata at the moment yes it is with the outer far far outer peripherals of the storm they last even up to about more than 500 km even 1000 km but there's no need to worry i will say no need to worry for west bengal particularly kolkata a rain doesn't do that damage yes heavy and high velocity right, winds but, but the worry is that yes yeah right Tell the me. worry though remains is the frequency with which we're seeing these cyclones emerging from the, from the bay of bengal uh, uh gargi uh, to tell you the fact before 2020 there was not a single storm which hit coastline for the 10 years in the month of may okay we saw yas that was 2020 which bashed uh, odisha near gopalpur and uh, 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 sorry 2020 it was amphan super cyclone which ravaged uh, coastal west bengal and even the interior parts followed by yas which definitely a uh, 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 bashed uh, odisha also near gopalpur and uh, balasore and this is the third successive year may month of may having a cyclone and uh, the severity obviously this time it's a little sparing unlike super cyclone and very severe cyclone and as we said that it's not uh, crossing the coast it should coming it should be it'll be coming closer to the coast as i caution again it can come a little dangerously close to the coast okay so threat remains of heavy rains squally winds gusty winds and we got to keep us very strict and close watch for the next about 3 uh, days especially between 11th and 13th we should be very very cautious about the storm yeah All right thank you so much for joining us this morning with some relief it seems the cyclone is not going to make landfall and just cause heavy rain though we'll be watching the developments very very closely In other news now the Supreme Court uh, to get two new judges today the Chief Justice of India and V Ramana will be administering the oath of office to Chief Justice of the Guwahati High Court uh, Justice Sudhanshu Dhulia 
and Gujarat High Court Judge Justice Jamshed B. Pardiwala. In fact, Justice Pardiwala will then be in line to become the Chief Justice in May 2028 for a span of over two years. Well, let's go across to Sukirti now for more. And Sukirti, tell us when you know all this is going to take place. Tell us more about the judges and with the swearing in, uh, the Supreme Court will regain its full strength of 34 judges. Uh, well, yes, Kargi. So this event is going to take place at about 10.30 a.m. Uh, the CJI, uh, Mr. N.B. Ramana, will be administering the oath uh, during this entire ceremony. Uh, as far as Justice uh, Jamshed Gujor uh, Pardiwala is concerned, he was earlier the Gujarat High Court judge. He's the fourth judge from the Parsi community who will be part of the Supreme Court uh, bench. And he's a fourth-generation legal professional. And has been practicing uh, law at the Gujarat High Court since about 1990. Uh, as far as Justice Sudhanshu Dhulia is concerned, he was earlier the Gujarat High Court Chief Justice. He will be the second judge to be elevated from Uttarakhand. And uh, interestingly, he is the sibling of National Awards winning film director and uh, actor Sigmanshu Dhulia. Uh, as far as the strength of judges is concerned, uh, this will, uh, yes, as you mentioned, uh, the Supreme Court will regain its strength of 34 judges with these two new appointments. And... Uh, Filling up vacancies has been one of the top agendas of CJI NV Ramana, and uh, that is why uh, the collegiums have been constantly making recommendations to the government on new appointments, and the government also in this particular case was very proactive and approved uh, the recommendation within a span of about 48 hours. All right. Uh, thanks, Akirti, for joining us with those details. Now, very, very unfortunate incident that took place with Indigo Airlines involving a special needs child. Indigo Airlines faced heat from passengers for not allowing a child with disabilities to board a flight with his family at the Rachi Airport on Saturday. Uh, in, its, in a shocking report, the airline in a statement said the child posed a threat to other passengers' safety. And in a statement said, in view of the safety of passengers, a specially able child could not board the flight with his family on the 7th. As he was in a state of panic, the ground staff waited for him to calm down till the last minute but to no avail is what the airline has said in a statement but there you can see visuals that were then recounted by one of the passengers Manisha Gupta <laughs> Right, so there you can see the passengers arguing with the ground personnel. Now, Manisha Gupta, one of the passengers who witnessed it, wrote about the incident in an elaborate uh, social media post. And uh, the Indigo manager, she said, kept shouting and telling everyone that the child is uncontrollable. Uh, the only person who's in panic is you, is what uh, Ms. Gupta quoted, a fellow passenger. Aviation regulator, uh, director uh, general of civil aviation has now sought a report from Indigo in the matter and the family was put up in a hotel and then flew the next day but now aviation minister Jyotiraditya Sindhya has also taken note of this incident and said there is zero tolerance towards such behavior no human being should have to go through this investigating the matter by myself post which appropriate action will be taken <laughs> 